welcome to A Word Fitly Spoken with author and speaker, Dana Rangioni. A program designed to strengthen your faith and encourage your heart. Psalm 55 this morning. Psalm 55. We have a visitor with us this morning. This is Robin, correct? Yes. Okay, I'm terrible with names, so I'm like, <laughs> please let me say the right name. Uh, this is Robin. She's uh, originally from Maryland. Yes. So she actually knows where Delaware is, <laughs> unlike most people. Um, we're very glad to have you with us this morning, Robin. Um, Psalm 55, we're going through a series uh, we call Mood Swing Mania. And it's about how in the life of David, it was just a roller coaster. Sometimes he was happy, sometimes he was sad, sometimes he was saying, kill me, Lord, you know, and sometimes he was saying, let me live, you know. He's just, he's on a, a roller coaster. And Psalm 55 is a very, well, they're all interesting to me, but Psalm 55 is another very interesting one. I was just telling Tina, I said, you get in these Psalms, and it's like, okay, this one's just got 23 verses, no big deal. But there's a lot of meat in these 23 verses, so we're going to kind of go a little fast. But before we start, I want to give you a little bit of history about where scholars think this psalm fits in in the life of David. We don't know for sure, but if you read through and we're going to point out some things, we're pretty sure we know where it fits in in his life. And it's at the time where his son Absalom is taking over the kingdom, taking over the throne, his rebellion. And David was betrayed by his friend and counselor and advisor, Ahithophel. What a name. Uh, but Ahithophel was supposed to be his friend. He was supposed to be his, his you know, right-hand man kind of thing. And come to find out, Ahithophel was in league with Absalom all along. So David obviously is feeling betrayed. He's upset not only that his son is taking over his kingdom, but his best friend too. I mean, you know, it seemed like everything had turned against him. And that's kind of where we think this psalm fits in. And I'm going to stop at some different verses and point out why everybody thinks that. Not everybody, but most biblical scholars. And I agree with them. I, I Just reading through, I'm like, I just see it fitting right there. But I also want to point out a few other verses that just, they just have some good stuff that I want to point out. So hopefully we will get through. Let's start with verse 1. And we're going to actually read all the way down to verse 8 for right now. Give ear to my prayer, O God, and hide not thyself from my supplication. We've heard that before. Attend unto me and hear me. I mourn in my complaint and make a noise. Because of the voice of the enemy, because of the oppression of the wicked, for they cast iniquity upon me, and in wrath they hate me. My heart is sore pained within me, and the terrors of death are fallen upon me. Fearfulness and trembling are come upon me, and horror hath overwhelmed me. And I said, Oh, that I had wings like a dove, for then would I fly away and be at rest. Lo, then would I wander far off and remain in the wilderness, Selah. I would hasten my escape from the windy storm and tempest. Okay, it's pretty obvious David is not feeling real good right now. He's, I mean, he's just very blunt about it. Lord, please listen to me, because I don't have anybody else to turn to. Nobody else will talk to me. I'm running from my life. I'm fearful. He says, I'm fearfulness and trembling. He says, the terrors of death. I mean, we've talked about this before when he was running from Saul. Can you imagine the fear? Every time you hear a noise, and in the woods you hear a lot of noises. Every twig that snapped, <gasps> did they find me? Are they going to get me? Are they going to kill me? You know, what a terrible, I mean, terrible terrible, scary experience to have to, to endure over and over and over again. And that's what David's life has been, bless his heart. He just, he runs from one and then he's, and then he's running from another. And he says, I'm just, my heart is sore pained. I just, I'm tired of this. And that's where verse six comes in. And verse six is probably one of my favorite verses in the Bible because it's just so poetic. Oh, that I had wings like a dove. For then would I fly away and be at rest. Do you remember the old um, bubble bath commercial? Calgon, take me away. <laughs> That's what David's saying. Take me away. <laughs> just get me. I, I just want to. I just want to fly away from it all. I want to leave it all behind. You ever wanted to do that? <laughs> when we go for vacation, that and, and that what we say? I just want to leave it all behind. When we went this past month, 
when we went for our anniversary. I told Jason, I said, do not bring your work phone. But I have a no, do not bring your work phone because I didn't want work calls coming in, you know. Even the, his personal phone, the, the employees and stuff will call his personal phone. I said, mm. When we got to the cabin and there was no cell signal, I was like, thank you, Lord, you know. <laughs> we got away from it all. There was no way for anybody to get in touch with us. We were alone, finally, and it was, we were away from it all, you know, and it felt good. It felt good to be away from it all for a little while, because I don't know about you, but sometimes it feels like it's just all caving in, and you just, help, help. That's how David felt. He just, I'm barely keeping my head above water, Lord. I just wish I could just fly away from it all. He says, then I'd be at peace. I'd wander far off and remain in the wilderness. I'd just, I'd hasten my escape. We talked about all the time, David's saying, hasten, hasten, hurry up, hurry up. From the windy storm, I just, phew. doves fly pretty quick. For those of you that, they say, phew, and they're gone. He said, I want to be a dove. I want to be out of here. And I think it's interesting because David could have said, I wish I was an eagle. An eagle is a bird of prey. As upset as he was, and I know how he feels, because I've had somebody who I thought was my friend stab me in the back. And it hurts. It hurts. And I didn't know what hurt more, the trouble that I got into because of the lies this person told on me, the fact that the person that the lies were told to (laughs) believed them about me, or the fact that this person would say it to begin with. But all combined, I'm surprised I made it home that day. I was crying so hard on my way home. I just, I couldn't even see. I cried till Jason got home. I was bawling. He comes in the door, what's the matter, you know? And then he was mad. (laughs) He was mad too, but it hurts. It hurts. David could have said, I wish I was an eagle. I wish I was the predator. I'm tired of being the prey. I'm, I'm, I'm ready to be the predator. But David wasn't thinking that way. He was, he was more hurt, I think, than he was angry. But the anger's coming. We'll see in a minute. But right now he just hurt. He said, I just want to get away from it. I just want to get away from it all. Now here comes some of the anger. <laughs> Sometimes I, we, we go through the stages, you know. He's starting to get angry. Look at verse 9. Destroy, O Lord, and divide their tongues, for I've seen violence and strife in the city. This is one of the first verses that kind of points to the time frame of Ahithophel. Ahithophel, remember, was David's advisor. Well, he became Absalom's advisor. And basically, he was telling Absalom, okay, this is how we need to deal with David. Let me go, and I'll kill him. I'll sneak into the night. When when the people see me, they'll flee. David will be all alone. I'll kill David alone, and nobody else has to die. Well, then another advisor, Hushai, who was actually loyal to David but was pretending to be loyal to Absalom, came up to Absalom and said, no, 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 that's no good. That's no good. What you need to do is you need to show the people, show David that you're strong and mighty. You go out to war. You go out and get David because the people need to believe in you. You lead the people and slaughter everybody that's on his side. Show that you're, show your strength, you know. Well, of course, Absalom... Remember, Absalom was vain, vain, very vain. He was the one with the beautiful hair, you know, and he brushed his hair. And I'm thinking, that's a little girly for me. But, <laughs> but he was very vain, and, of course, that stroked his vanity. Yeah, the people look to me because I slew the king, and I led the people, and oh, you know. So he followed Hushai's advice. Divide their tongues. One counselor saying, do it this way. One counselor saying, do it that way. Divided advice. That's the first verse, kind of. Verse 10. Day and night they go about, go about it upon the walls thereof. Mischief also and sorrow are in the midst of it. I'm talking about the city just being torn apart. Wickedness is in the midst thereof. Deceit and guile depart not from her streets. For it was not an enemy that reproached me. Then I could have borne it. Neither was it he that hated me that did magnify himself against me. Then I would have hid myself from him. But it was thou, a man mine equal, my God, my guide, and mine acquaintance. There's another couple of verses that sounds a whole lot like a hit the pell to me. If it was an enemy, I could understand it. 
If it was somebody that hated me, okay, I can deal with that. I've been watching for it. You know, you watch for your enemies. You don't watch for your friends to stab you in the back. He says, but it wasn't. It was you. A man, my equal, my guide, my friend. It was you. Mm. Shame, shame, shame. Look at verse 14. We took sweet counsel together and walked unto the house of God in company. <clears throat> Not only were you my friend, we went to church together. Isn't it hard when somebody that, you know, you sit beside in the church pew and then they do something that just, you think you know them, and then they turn around and do something so awful, and you think, I know we're all human, and we all make mistakes. But it's harder, I think, when it comes from somebody that you trust that much. Somebody that you think, and I guess in our own way, it's our own fault, we think is above that. Mm -hmm. Preachers. We're bad to put preachers up on this pedestal of, you know, well, he's the preacher. You know what? Preachers have to fight the flesh, too. They have to fight the lusts of the, the body, and they have to, to fight the world and, the, you know, Satan. They have to fight all that, too. They're, they're not, you know, above human. They are human. Of course. Oh, yeah. yeah, and we've talked about that in here before. <laughs> is, you know, if you're not putting up any fight, why does he need to mess with you? You know, you're not trying to get close to God anyway, so you're right where I want you. You, on the other hand... You're trying to get closer, and I don't want that, you know. And he, the, the closer, and that's why I think preachers get hit so hard. And, you know, anybody in any kind of ministry, missionaries and everything, I mean, it's, a, it's an attack, a constant battle. And David knew that. But it's hard when it comes from a friend. It is so hard, so hard. And I was telling Jason, y'all know, you, you don't, because you don't know me yet. But I'm a King Arthur, Camelot, Medieval Knights fan. I just, I just can't get the legends and how they just get retold so many different ways. I just think it's fascinating. I just, I, I eat it up. Well, there's a British show called Merlin, and it's based on the King Arthur legend, only it focuses on the magician Merlin instead of King Arthur. So it's a whole different look. But it deals with them when they're teenagers, as opposed to when they're grown. I just think it's the greatest show. I mean, it just it's clean, and you don't have to worry about, you know. And it's just, it's, it's, I, it's funny to me. I just, I love it. But the episode I watched last week, because I always, when I take my lunch break, I always watch them early. I'll eat my lunch. It just refreshes me, you know. And the one I watched was um, King Arthur was betrayed by his uncle, who all this time had been advising him of how to do this, well, your father would have done it this way. And your father, knowing, of course, that King Arthur was trying to live up to his father's legacy, yeah, his father's expectation, because his father always was disappointed in him. So he knew exactly how to stroke him, that, you know, well, your father would have done it this way, and you can't appear weak before the people, and you got to do, you know. Well, then come to find out, he's been in league with the bad guys all along. And in this episode, Arthur, King Arthur finally finds out. And as he's sitting there, you know, tears pooled in his eyes going, how could I have been so stupid? Why didn't I see it? Other people saw it. Why didn't I see it? I was taken to the psalm, and I was just like, that's awesome, Lord. Because it, it was a picture to me just of poor little David sitting there, his eyes pooled with tears going, how could I have been so stupid? Why didn't I see it? Why didn't I see it? Some things never change, do they? <laughs> Some things never change. He just didn't see it. Let's read on a little bit more. Verse 15. Let death seize upon them. Okay, you see the anger coming in here? And let them go down quick into hell, for wickedness is in their dwellings and among them. David's starting to get some harsh language. Let them go to? <laughs> you know, he just, uh, he's had it. He says, I'm done. But he says, let death seize upon them. You know, God actually complied with that. If this is, in fact, talking about Ahithophel and Absalom. Ahithophel, when he found out, and this kind of strikes me as humorous. They say we're moody. When Ahithophel found out that Absalom took Hushai's advice instead of his, he went and hanged himself. You didn't listen to me. It's not fair. I'm gonna, you know. <laughs> is that ridiculous or what? He did. It says when he, and that's exactly how the Bible says, when he found out he didn't take his advice, he went and hanged himself. Okay. 
be. But death sees upon them. We can get messed up in our thinking, can't we? But I think, too, God had a, I mean, I know God had a hand in it, but I think maybe that line of thought was, eh, you, you're done, you know. You're, I'm done with you, Ahithophel. You've done your, your job. And he hanged himself. I mean, he was, he was done. But God wasn't finished yet. If you remember in the story of Absalom, he did ride out, like Hushai said, to get David. And his hair got caught in the tree, remember? And while his hair was caught in the tree and he couldn't, Joab came out and stabbed him with the darts, and then the men slew him with their swords. I'm like, nice. <laughs> you know. But you, well, if you picture that, it's got to be comical sight. I mean, seeing this guy caught by the, his hair. I mean, his you know, Yes, exactly. He's hung up by his vanity, and it's the end of him. Sin will find you out. And even though it may seem like you're getting away with it, Absalom thought he was getting away with it. Look at me. He didn't get away with it for long. So I think that's why so many times the Bible says, fret not thyself because of evildoers. It looks like they've got it made. They don't. They don't. Look at verse 16. As for me, let's get away from the bad guys. Let's look at me. As for me, I will call upon God, and the Lord shall save me. Evening and morning and at noon will I pray and cry aloud, and he shall hear my voice. He has faith. For once, well, not for once, because he does it all the time. He's, I don't believe, I do believe, I don't believe, I do believe. But once again, we see, I guess, he's turning back to God's promises. In 2 Samuel seven sixteen, and you don't have to turn there, but this is what God said to David. And thine house and thine kingdom shall be established forever before thee. Thy throne shall be established forever. He already said, David, you're going to rule until I'm done with you. And I'm not done with you yet. If God says he's not done with you yet, don't give up. He has plans. It may not seem like it right now, but he has plans. David could say, I shall call upon the Lord, and I shall be saved, and he shall deliver me. Why? Because he was believing on the promises. He went back and said, because God promised me. That's it. That's all it takes. God promised it. God doesn't lie. Verse 18, he hath delivered my soul in peace from the battle that was against me, and there were many with me. I like that he didn't just deliver my soul, he delivered it in peace. There's a whole lot of difference between thriving or surviving and thriving. I'm getting by. I'm getting by. I'm getting by. That's not enough. We need to do more than just get by. We need to do more than endure life. We need to enjoy life. We have the joy of the Lord. God doesn't want us to go, okay, I had another day. Check. <laughs> he wants us to enjoy, you know, enjoy life thrive try to see help others see why we can go through stuff like this and say but the lord's gonna take care of it and people go huh you know how do you know because he said so well how do you know it's true because i've seen him do it time and time and time again let me tell you about it you know that's what he wants david said he delivered me in peace verse 19 God shall hear and afflict them, even he that abideth of old, Selah, because they have no changes, therefore they fear not God. In other words, they're not going to change. They're not going to change. Verse 20, he hath put forth his hands against such as be at peace with him. He hath broken his covenant. The words of his mouth were smoother than butter, but war was in his heart. Kind of sounds like the Antichrist, doesn't it? You know, the Bible says when he speaks, all the people just, and to tell you the truth, it reminded me a lot of what, when Obama was first elected, you know, all these speeches and people, it just, he's such an elegant, and I just can't, you know, and I'm thinking, that's scary. Because that was a, the first thing when I heard somebody say that, I was like, that reminds me of the Antichrist, you know. Yeah, just such a smooth, you know, it's, it's his butter. It just, it just drips off their tongue, you know, and it's like, be aware. Beware of somebody where it just drips off their tongue, you know? Beware. And that's how he said, he said that's how Ahithophel was. His words were smoother than butter, but all along 
in, in his heart, he knew he was going to war against me. He, he was warring against me then. His words were softer than oil, yet were they drawn swords. Mm-mm-mm. Look at verse 22. Cast thy burden upon the Lord, and he shall, not he might, he shall sustain thee. He shall never suffer the righteous to be moved. Do you remember last week talking about casting? <laughs> I came across that. I was like, oh, that's awesome, Lord. We talked last week about the cast sheep. The cast sheep is the one that's flipped upside down, and it's on its back, and it can't get turned over. The only way it can get turned over is for the shepherd to turn it over. Because if another person that doesn't know how to deal with the sheep, it tries to turn them, they could actually break their legs or even break their back. So the shepherd has to. So a cast sheep is one that's down in a place where only the shepherd can touch it. We talked about the difference of casting like a fisherman. How does a fisherman cast? They cast and then they reel it back in. When we cast our burdens to the Lord, we shouldn't do the fisherman cast and reel it back in. (laughs) That's not what God wants us to do. He wants us to cast it like the sheep and put it in a place where only he can deal with it. And I talked about that last week, and I made the big deal about it because it was so exciting. And all week long, I have battled that. Casting, casting casting because something I would pray about and I'd give to the Lord and then 10 minutes later I'd find myself going but how are we going to do this money you know and then the Lord would say cast the sheep Dana the sheep <laughs> and I'd say I'm sorry I'm sorry stop reeling it back in cast like the sheep cast thy burden upon the Lord and he shall sustain thee but you know what if we keep reeling it back in it doesn't say he'll sustain us then If we choose to carry it on our own, that's our choice. If we give it to him, then he'll hold us up. Verse 23, But thou, O Lord, shalt bring them down into the pit of destruction. Bloody and deceitful men shall not live out half their days, but I will trust in thee. That verse, I think, points to a time in Moses' life where Moses was leading the people of Israel and they were leading them and the people were complaining we left Egypt for this at least we had something to eat (laughs) well there was a group of people a group of men leaded by a man named Korah and they basically came up to Moses and said who who made you boss well God did (laughs) you know (laughs) who do you think you are to tell us what to do who do you think why should we follow you and Moses basically challenged him kind of to a duel kind of thing almost like Elijah challenged the prophets and he said, well, well, we'll meet here tomorrow, and we'll let God point out to the people. Let's let all the people see. We'll let God point out to the people who he wants to lead. So they gathered, and in the meantime, the Lord told Moses, said, get all the people away from Korah and his men. Get them away. The, yes, they can be there. Yes, they can see. But get them away from Korah, away from their houses and everything. And Moses said, okay. So he told all the people, get away, get away, get away, get away. You can stand to watch, but get away. God says, get away, get away. So the morning came, and Korah says, okay, let's see what you got, Moses. And all of a sudden, coincidentally, (laughs) the whole ground opened up under Korah and his whole, the houses and everything, everything. Korah, his family, his friends, their houses, and the whole ground just, and then closed up gone no sign of them hmm i wonder who god wants to lead <laughs> Dave, the problem out of the leader's way. yeah david says they're gonna bring he says god you shall bring them down into a pit of destruction he said i've read about it it's been done before god you're just gonna suck them up maybe not physically again even though he did it physically for moses may not be physically for for david's enemy but the principle is the same. They're not going to survive. They're not going to thrive. He says you, they won't live out half their days. Interesting. Interesting song. Real quick, I just want to point out that this passage sounds very much like somebody else in the Bible, doesn't it? Somebody who was betrayed by a friend. Actually, Jesus. Somebody that he trusted, even though he knew 
but everybody trusted. And even yeah. even when Jesus told the disciples, you know, the one who I hand the bread, he's going to be the one that betrays me. And then Judas goes out and they're like, oh, I think he's going to go buy some more bread. <laughs> Weren't you listening? <laughs> Weren't you listening? They trusted Judas so much they couldn't believe it of him. And he, too, like Ahithophel, went and hung himself. Yep. Interesting parallel, isn't it? Remember how David is a type of Christ? Nothing's in here by accident. Right. The word Brother Ed talked about this morning, it's not an accident. It's complete. It's complete. It's, and it's all tied together. Sometimes you just have to figure out how to make it mesh. <laughs> but it's all there. You have been listening to A Word Fitly Spoken with Christian author and speaker, Dana Rangioni. For more information about Dana and her ministry, visit DanaRangioni.com. That's DanaRangioni.com. Thank you, and have a blessed day.